it's never good when the humidity is higher than the temperature and I got my air on full blast so I'm sorry for the background sounds but man is it moist in here today Woo! all right guys today we are going to talk about nonlinear conduction and how that applies and fits in with Ohm's law we're not going to get into Ohm's law I've covered that in my basic electricity and electronics playlist so if you're interested in that you know check that out but just to be brief here's our Ohm's law triangle V I R voltage current and resistance and how they're all related to each other if you want to find one you multiply there if you want to find this one divide you get the idea it's pretty simple so let's start off by talking about linear conduction and resistance so let's we'll make a simple circuit here battery and an incandescent lamp nothing else in our battery we'll say is 18 volts and our lamp has three ohms of resistance so we know two parts of our ohms law we know voltage we know resistance what we don't know is current so voltage divided by current I'm sorry voltage divided by resistance will give us our current our current of course flows in this direction and our answer in this particular case is current equals 6 amps so what if we change our battery voltage 36 volts well in that case our current would be 12 amps that's a linear conduction are you with me so far good but as is usually the case things are not always that simple and one of the main things that can cause nonlinear conduction who knows the answer anybody Joey temperature temperature can change the resistance of items causing nonlinear conduction in fact we have components that are built for that such as a varistor but let's say if this was a real circuit as this lamp heated up the resistance would increase which would cause the current to increase which would cause the resistance to increase boom 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 things just keep going up and up and up like here's an example graph so we have voltage here and current here and there is our linear progression of the resistance as current and voltage increase our resistance also increases along a straight line but when we get to the nonlinear put I and V here what you're going to notice happening is the graph is going to look more like this over time are you with me still you see in this case the resistance rises sharply here but then it starts to flatten out as the temperature of the lamp increases and this is caused by the metal wire of the filament another example of this and a great example I think you'll like it is the conduction through gases like air at standard temperatures and pressures air is a really good insulator but if the voltage of the air gap 
is breached by ionization, which basically means the electrons in the air molecules, whether it's the oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, ozone, whatever, they get their electrons stripped off. And those floating free electrons allow the voltage to cross that gap much more easily than they could before everything heated up. All right, so what I got here is a high voltage generator. This thing uh, takes between three and five volts and outputs somewhere around 30 kilovolts. So, it's on. That distance is too much, but as we get closer, the air is ionized. The electrons get stripped off, and now the insulating air becomes a great conductor. So here's an example of that same graph we used for the lamp, but this time for that high voltage generator. So we have our voltage here, and we have our current here. And somewhere around this point, about, about three quarters of the way into our graph, we're going to reach the ionization potential point, and it's going to look like that. When we reach this point here, we begin stripping off those electrons, the air heats up, and now we conduct very easily until we reach the maximum current available, and then it levels off. But that's how that one works. And that demonstration with the high voltage generator is the reason or an example of why lightning bolts are only momentary in nature. <laughs> because what happens is the voltage buildup between the clouds and the earth or different sets of clouds has to increase to the point where it overcomes the ionization potential of the air and then we get that flow of those stripped off electrons and wham we get a lightning bolt once it does the current will continue to conduct through the ionized air until the static charge depletes once that happens the lightning bolts over and all this happens in a fraction of a second now if you remember at the beginning I told you there are components that are designed specifically for this, such as the varistor, uh, gas discharge tube, and along that line we also have um, vacuum tubes, or valves, for those of you from the UK, right? There's even a component called a tunnel diode or an Isaki that will create negative resistance. That's some wild stuff right there, right? I mean, that kind of defies the laws of physics. I hope you guys enjoyed this short little video on nonlinear conduction. If you did, give me a thumbs up, please. And I would also like to thank Emma from LearnToSolderKits.com, who got me something from my Amazon wish list. Take a look at this little guy. This is called the Espotech Labrador. You guys have any clue what this is? Well, it is an all-in-one oscilloscope, signal generator, power supply, logic analyzer, and multimeter. Or, if you're from Wisconsin, multimeter. <laughs> so we're going to be checking that out in the future, but I just wanted to thank Emma for her kind gift. This is, looks like a really cool little component here. Alright guys, feel free to like, comment, share. Don't forget to subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, Check out Patreon, there's a link down below. Dollar a month is all I ask. 
and every month we do a patron only zoom call where we can get together and chop it up a little bit about electronics life music whatever that's it i'm out peace